Foreign investors steering clear of putting their money to work in the United States in October, but there was one exception, U.S. Treasuries, which according to new data from the Treasury Department, saw net purchases of nearly $35 billion. Big reason for that is the $50 billion sale of agency securities by foreign central banks, which swapped those assets to buy Treasuries. That was exactly the case with China, which had a net purchase of $66 billion in Treasuries in October, increasing its lead as the world's largest holder of U.S. debt. As the Fed meets tomorrow with a likely drop in its interest rates, one former chief economist at the International Monetary Fund says a little bit of inflation would actually be a benefit for the ailing economy. We take you inside his view and how he thinks the new administration can begin to shift and right the ship. Joining us is Kenneth Rogoff, economics professor with Harvard University. Ken, always nice to have you on the program. Welcome back. Thank you, Maria. So you're expecting the Fed to lower interest rates again tomorrow? Oh, goodness. They're certainly going to lower interest rates. I think right now what they're discussing is what's next. Uh, they're going to use quantitative easing to try to uh, buy bonds basically with money. And how much risk are they willing to take of having inflation on the upside instead of getting deflation? I think the chairman, Ben Bernanke, is trying to talk his colleagues into saying it'd be better to have some inflation than allow the economy to get into a long period of falling prices. So how much inflation would you expect there to be in the coming years then, Ken? Well, I think in 2009, it's all they can do to like hold inflation flat. But I really don't think Ben Bernanke is going to oversee a period of two or three years of falling prices, given everything he's said and written over the years. I think by 2010, we'll have robust inflation. I think that's perfectly good thing, given the debt mess that we have. So, so let me ask you this. You, you wrote an op-ed recently, Kenneth, and you said that the Fed should not worry about inflation, that the higher inflation would be part of a solution to the economic crisis. This is the point you're making now. How is that uh, a solution? Walk us through what would be the benefit. Well, if we have deflation, that raises the cost of holding debt, and that makes it harder for homeowners. It makes the security mess bigger, and inflation is really the opposite. Now, we're not a banana republic where we're going to have 200 percent inflation and wipe things off the books, but we are a little bit of a banana republic and that we're having trouble working all this out. And so having a moderate inflation, even 5 or 6 percent for a year or two, really would not be a bad thing compared to the alternatives. I mean, if we can magically work it all out, great. I'm afraid I don't think we're going to see that. Well, let me ask you this, Ken. I mean, you were very accurate uh, in terms of predicting where things would head next. You were negative and you were absolutely rightly uh, r right in your prediction in terms of how this uh, economic slowdown and financial crisis has played out. Where are we in, this, in the system today? Where are we in this cycle? Well, we're probably halfway through the macroeconomic part. I mean, a two-year recession is a long time. I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic, that with the new team, with a coherent plan coming from the new administration, by the end of 2009, you know, the negative part of the growth story will be gone. But probably unemployment could be rising for a year after that, and housing prices will probably still be falling also. We're going to see fallout for really a couple years, but hopefully the worst of it will be through uh, starting towards the end of next year. But, you know, it's not going to ring in the new year with good news. And, and what about consolidation? Are you expecting to see a lot more of it in the financial services sector? Well, that's a big question. I mean, that's a decision of the new administration, but my guess is, yes, we will, that we're going to see a consolidation around a small number of big banks, that they're going to ring fence and really try to protect. The question is, how much regulation are they going to put on them so they don't cause problems in the future? And I also think they'll allow hedge funds and other entities to exist on the fringes, but they'll probably get some regulation there also. So that, that's an interesting point because you are talking about smaller balance sheets and a lot less leverage and much tighter regulation. Who do you think gets, gets impacted mostly when you see things change in, in regard to uh, regulation? Do you think that's going to dampen people's, uh, people's enthusiasm to invest in financials? <laughs> I think to say the least, I mean, uh, it's going to be a tough time for financials. Uh, it's probably going to be harder to get credit. We're going to have higher interest rates, higher spreads at the end of this, but possibly a more stable economy. I certainly hope they don't go too far. I mean, that's a concern that they're going to try to bring us back 25 years, and that's fine if you're willing to bring output back 25 years, but I don't think we are. So the questions, can they do it and have a light hand? Uh, that's going to be a really tough challenge for the new team. What, what about Tim Geithner? What are your thoughts uh, of, of Geithner as Treasury Secretary? 
Well, I think it was a terrific appointment as part of the team. Uh, Larry Summers is like a big thing, very ambitious guy. Uh, Tim Geithner can certainly think out of the box, but he's very centered, very calm, and, uh, you know, sort of a balanced center of gravity within this administration. Uh, what what do you think he needs to do as sort of uh, topic A when he gets in, in office there, uh, Ken? Because you've got so many issues and people are confused as far as what the TARP is being used for. What do you think he could spend his time best doing? Oh, I mean, there's no question they need to come out quickly with a big plan that covers all the points. How much macroeconomic stimulus? I'd like to see at least $500 billion a year for a couple of years. Um, what are they going to do about housing? A substantial plan to prop up housing uh, prices. They need to say, what are we going to do with the financials? What is our blueprint? Where do we want to go? And of course, they have to work together with the Federal Reserve on monetary policy. The problem's been that the Fed has been trying to do all the lifting. We need the, the whole team. They, he needs to come in big, quickly, and I think they will. Mm -hmm. Big quickly in terms of investing in the banks or big quickly in terms of making new changes? Big quickly in terms of presenting the whole picture instead of, you know, going here and going there. So particularly, they need to say, what are we going to do with the banks? What's our vision of the regulatory future and how are we going to get there? They need to go big quickly in terms of a fiscal stimulus uh, and also some sort of prop up of housing prices. There are a number of plans out there. I think the whole problem is that they've been doing it piecemeal. And yes, you need experimentation, as Chairman Bernanke said. But, you know, if you sort of blunder from one idea to another, that doesn't work very well. They need a clear, coherent plan. That's what we've been lacking. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and I think all of the stimulus plans coming in, in different uh, forms have unnerved investors. People are confused by it as opposed to feeling uh, confident in you it. Know, we know our taxes are going to be higher, but we don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Ken, as far as uh, the, the, the broad recession and the economy, uh, where it is today, would you expect the U.S. to emerge from this recession before the rest of the world? Do you think that we are uh, ahead uh, in terms of the slowdown? Uh, has Europe seen w the worst yet? <laughs> it's a tough question. I mean, I think the U.S. will take longer to really get growing. We're not going to see a V-shaped recovery because our financial system is a bigger mess than about anybody's except you know, maybe England, Spain, and Ireland. Uh, so I think that's going to be a very tough thing for us to overcome. I expect to see the emerging markets, although they're sinking a lot, have a much more V-shaped recovery than we're going to have. Europe, I'm cautiously optimistic, but boy, you know, the ECB and the German government don't really seem to want to get ahead of the curve. Until they manage to do that, they're going to keep sinking. All right, we'll leave it there. Ken, always nice to have you on the program. Thanks so Pleasure. much for your insights. We appreciate it. Ken Rogoff.